Chances are your belly is still recovering from all that goodness you ate yesterday. The last thing you want to hear about is something healthy, but let's talk about healthy food and the lack of access to it in some parts of our city. It can lead to bigger health disparities, which can continue a cycle of inequities in our communities. Victoria De Leon looks at the economic reasons food deserts exist and what can be done about that. This map from the city of Denver highlights food deserts across the city. The darker the color, the higher percentage of people not within a 10 minute walk to the grocery store. The U.S. Department of Agriculture considers an area to be a food desert if at least 500 people or 33% of the population live more than a mile away from a supermarket or large grocery store. You know, there's smaller grocery stores, I think, but they tend to not, you know, not serve the fresh food. And so, unfortunately, people in those areas end up paying really high prices because they're forced to shop at these convenience stores and these small format stores. Darren Dubersmith is a senior lecturer with MSU Denver's College of Business. He says food deserts all come down to money. A store would open up a store in a location if they thought they could turn a profit. It's not unusual for grocery stores to operate with very thin profit margins, which is why Dubersmith says population size in communities and consumer volume also plays a role in where chain grocery stores decide where to open up a location. That's where he says tax incentives from federal and state governments could offer a solution. In, in the same way that car companies get tax credits to produce green vehicles, King Supers and Safeway and these businesses could be subsidized by the set, uh, state and federal government to produce uh, essentially money losing grocery stores in these food deserts. So what's really interesting is the Sun Valley neighborhood was once considered a food desert. Then earlier this year, about a month ago, maybe a publicly funded grocery store opened up through a partnership between the Denver Housing Authority and the city. So, Steve, it seems like Denver is starting to make some progress in that direction. Yeah. And, and you know, it seems so easy. You just say put more money into this problem. It's tricky to try to convince people to do that. Right, exactly. It's tricky to convince people that, hey, your taxes might go up to put grocery stores in this area where they really need it. And that's where you see a lot of nonprofits come into play. You see these mobile food pantries, but those seem kind of like Band-Aid solutions. It's good to talk about solutions, though. It's nice to hear about that. Victoria DeLeon, thank you. Appreciate it.